Right men, gather round and let Papa Ducky share some of his misguided wisdom with you. Now I know why you clicked on this video. Let's be real, we all have mixed feelings about this lot I'm going to talk to you about today. Sure, they leave hair everywhere. They're always needy and constantly looking for attention. They take up half your bed, especially if you're fat like mine. And they work up quite the sizable vet bill. Oh, wait, wrong script. Ugh, you can strike that last one. I've always been a solitary kind of fella. I enjoy my own company, I watch my own favourite movies, and I laugh at all my own jokes. If I were gay, I think I'd be quite the perfect catch for me to live with. Though I'd have to be a power top, let's be real. I've seen that weapon, and I don't fancy being split in half. If you know what I mean, ladies. But unfortunately, the technology isn't quite there yet, so I had my missus move in with me instead. This isn't recent, this happened about three or four years ago. Hence, the wealth of knowledge I'm about to drop on you lot. Now, I'm a fiercely independent lad. I cook, I wash my own clothes, and I clean the house at least once every other month. Pair that with my enjoyment of my own free time, then you can imagine I was pretty unsure about living with a woman, as most fellas would be when they're presented with that prospect. But not to worry lads, I've experienced it all firsthand, and I'm here now, three plus years later, to tell you that but yes, your worries are correct and no you don't get used to it every day is a struggle. She keeps asking me questions that suck the very fucking youth from my bones. Yes, that washing powder does smell nice, doesn't it? No, I don't know why it's a problem that I leave my clothes on the bedroom floor. Of course not! I love being poked and tickled while trying to watch a fucking film. <sighs> Push it down, ducky. Keep that anger for the bedroom. So yeah, as soon as you move in with a woman, you start noticing the changes. The first thing I noticed with my missus is her woman vision. Let me give you an example. This is a clean kitchen. This is a single dirty plate. Now, look what happens when I take that dirty plate, put it into the sink and leave it there. Now, most of you wouldn't have seen anything unusual. That's normal and a perfectly reasonable thing to do. No need to wash a single plate, am I right? Best wait for a few more dishes to pile up to justify the energy putting into it to do the wash up. Now, let's try that same scene again. But this time, we're going to see it through a filter of a woman's eyes that I've overlaid on this video. Are you ready? Did you see the difference this time? Yeah, and this isn't even exclusive to my missus. Did you know there's men all over the world right now being abused, humiliated, and dehumanized by these women because of their biological ocular differences? They call men lazy for not cleaning up properly calling them dirty, calling them useless, all the while completely unaware that it's actually them that are the problem. They have faulty eyes. All they see is dirt. Though funny how that doesn't extend to cleaning up their own hair that's laying about the place. Seriously, it's beyond a joke. I can stand finding long hairs on my clothes, on my pillow, down my throat because somehow it got into my own food that she wasn't even anywhere near when I prepared. But what happens to me is, and this is going to sound fucking weird. I keep pulling her hair out of my jocks. There'll be some days I'll be just slumped on the couch watching something while fondling me balls, as you do as a bloke. It's bloke law, we don't know why we do it either. And suddenly I'll find a long hair tangled around my finger. This is especially odd for me because I'm a manscaping man. I've said it before, a cock and bollocks is not a nice sight, so I do what I can. Just shave off the whole lot and leave a little happy trail so she doesn't have to feel like a pedo. Now I don't know why, but I just keep pulling her hair from out around my balls. It happens on days I'm not even around her. I could be out on a night out with the boys and go to de-velcro my sack from the side of my leg and I'll find one. Or even worse, when you find one by your balls, but it's not around your sack, but instead it's running under and is tucked neatly between the cheeks of your arse, which you only notice when you go to pull it out and essentially floss your hole with it. And as a flaming heterosexual, you do get a bit of a startle having something essentially credit card swipe that close to your one-way system. One huge difference I've noticed between men and women, and this is something that becomes glaringly obvious when you live with one, is how you answered the question, how was your day? You see, when she asks me that question at the end of the day, I answer it like you're supposed to. I'll give a quick summary of my day. So it'll be something like, I got up at 11, petted the dog, hit the gym, worked on a video for a couple of hours, did a bit of shopping, cooked some food, that's about it. Now she answers the same question differently. She gives me a play-by-play -play of her day. She tells me everything she did that day in real time. So her answer will sound something like, Well, I got up at 7, got dressed, brushed my teeth, then I went downstairs and made some weedy bix and I had a slice of toast, then I let the dogs out for the toilet, then I ate my breakfast while watching friends, then I made my lunch and jumped into the car and turned on the heater because it was fucking freezing. At this point I've long since tuned out. I tried to listen. God knows I try. But it's like trying to swim up a fucking waterfall. How is it humanly possible to stay tuned in when so much of what she says is filler? As a fella, you need to develop the ability to tune things out. It's necessary. Otherwise your brain would get full of so much unimportant shit. It would start to overwrite cherished childhood memories. But now my problem is tuning out has become my default setting. So when she's actually trying to tell me something 
something important that I have to remember, I have to actively tell myself to listen to what she's saying, which never works. Because when I tell myself to listen, I get so busy telling myself to listen that I don't actually take in what she's saying, so I miss the important bit of information she was trying to tell me. Sleeping with a woman is a nightmare too. You see it in movies and ads that classic love duck couple holding and lovingly embracing each other in a cocoon of warmth, safety and comfort. And I can tell you right now that that's not how actual couples sleep together. Let me give you a rundown of a typical night with my missus. First things first, you know the way they say women are from Venus and men are from Mars? Really it should be that women are from Neptune. Why Neptune? Well because it's pretty and approximately minus 200 degrees Celsius, which is roughly the average temperature of a woman's fingertips when she gets into bed. I don't know how it happens. She's complaining about the heat not 10 minutes before she gets into bed, but somehow in that 30 seconds between getting out of her clothes and getting under the covers, she seems to be able to vent that heat more efficiently than reactor number four. So it ends up being less about romantically embracing each other and more about short, sharp, panicked gasps of air as we fight off the hypothermia that's setting in. Of course, you women don't hear us complain about it as we stick to your back with the permafrost, because like so many male weaknesses, if a woman finds out about them, they'll exploit them, usually by attempting to run those icicles ye call fingers up our back for fun, and we'd sooner die before we'd expose that weakness, just ask Jack. But even without the cold element, women are so inconsiderate in bed. Even when you just want to sleep, they try to play mind games, try to mess with you. Just one last fuck you before bed. What she and a lot of women do is they strip down to their underwear before jumping into bed, and then when you throw your arm around her in an attempt to be nice, knowing she likes to feel comforted, she likes to feel safe, what she'll do to show her appreciation appreciation for this gesture is to press her bare arse directly into your crotch, continue to grind on it under the guise of getting comfortable, and then when they inevitably wake the kraken, proceed to bitch at you for looking for the hop because she's too tired, and you're left standing there in the bathroom giving yourself a handy shandy as thanks for being nice. What's worse is we were tired too. We wanted to go to sleep as well, but you set us off. But they'll act all innocent acting like they didn't know they would set us off. It's not a nuclear weapon. You don't need a particular person with two keys that go in and twist at the same time and open a number panel then you have to enter a code to arm it. It's a dick. If you brush off it, if the wind blows too hard, if you so much as look at it out of the corner of your eye while you're eating a yogurt, then check your phone because you've already gotten six messages from it saying, I'm here, where you at? Not that you could sleep without being riddled with the horn anyway, because when they're unconscious, their true inner bastard comes out. A sleeping woman is a sight to behold. If you have any idea of them being beautiful, delicate, fragile, sweet, dear little things, well that don't last longer than the first proper night you have to spend with them after they've fallen asleep. Because that lovely arse of theirs goes rogue and starts ripping farts so horrific and hateful you actually begin to wonder if it's possible to have an arse exorcism. Farts so grotesque that they turn in their sleeps themselves to get away from it to avoid the friendly fire. You genuinely consider ending a relationship over it, just packing your bags and f***ing off before she even wakes up. Just leave a note that says, if you can read this through the brown haze, I take everything back that I said about your arse, sort yourself out girl. And if you're truly committed, all you can do is hope to god she keeps that thing pointing the other direction and pray she doesn't poof out a little pocket of it that lies in wait ready to ambush you under the covers until you give your leg a quick kick to cool off your sack and get a waft of warm sour booty right in the face. Ugh. But to say all your problems are solved as she's facing you would be a lie too because my missus anyway has a very unique ability to ensure that every cubic meter of air that I inhale is composed entirely of her exhale. Really, when she sleeps, she breathes like she's trying to warm my face with her lungs. Every exhale is like you punched a vampire into the diaphragm. <sighs> so I'll find myself starting to doze off sometimes, only to snap awake, gasping like a freediver because I've spent the last five minutes breathing in warm, refreshing carbon dioxide. And if that doesn't wake me up, her talking in her sleep will. Yeah, she's got the full deck when it comes to sleeping quirks. It's like something out of a horror movie sometimes. It'll be like three o'clock in the morning and the house will be completely still. You could hear a mouse scratch his bollocks, and then suddenly, she starts laughing. I turn to see it out of sheer what the fuckery, and she'd be lying there in bed with her eyes closed, laughing away, and then stop, but proper stop. She goes from full-blown laughter back to sleepy face in an instant. It's a bit creepy to say the least. Thankfully, I'm not creeped out so easily, but I can't help but think, given her hatred for horror movies and how easily startled she is, that if the shoe was on the other foot and I did that in my sleep, she wouldn't take the chance. She'd have two bullets in me before I could get the second chuckle in. Right, I've rambled long enough. These videos are already an absolute bastard to make. I may do another one of these at some stage, so pop a like on this and let me know if you want to see that. And don't worry about my missus getting offended by this video. She has thick skin and a good sense of humour. Trust me, she can give as good as she gets. In fact, she wanted to do a video on me to make us even, but it was 416 pages long and still didn't get to the fucking point. <laughs>
Oh, sorry, just had to get one more dig in there. Anyway, like, subscribe, Patreon, and I'll catch you lads and ladies in the next one. <laughs>